All right, guys, in this episode, we had the Seven Star Speedway to take part in the Patrick Briner Memorial Race. We were pushing the time limit uh, to make it the track on time. Um, they had qualifying after hot laps to set up the feature. Um, we were unaware of the format. I personally thought it was just a money race, a money memorial race for just one division. However, they did it as a whole show, um, which is very nice. Um, raised a lot of funding there, being that every um, class was participated in it and not just one class. Um, but we were rushed on time, so it was it was a lot of rushing around and chaos, to say the least. <laughs> fifth in the B main so we made it we got to put in the B main we didn't make it to the A main um, I think if I changed my gear there and had the gearing right we probably been close um, because we were way off 
way, way, way off. And tires, we still fought tires. Let's see how we can do here in the B main. Shaw, point third to nine of Isaac Schaumer. Fourth 192 at Trevor Kirsten, fifth to be the 11 of Evan Potter. Sixth to 11 B of Eric Bugle, seventh 22 next to Isaac Elliott.
those of you that aren't aware of Seven Star Speedway and the layout, um, the pit area is not like any other track that I've known uh, or visited. It's, it's rather large, so you have to kind of walk around the track. So where we pit is off of turn turn four, so we had to walk all the way up to turn one, um, the exit of turn two to grid. So that took some extra time as well. I'm unaware of the cart count, but there were a lot of carts there to support this race, which is nice to see. Um, overall, I thought the show went and flowed pretty decent. It was just a lot of chaos. As you can see, we uh, still can't get the monkey off our back. We're still uh, finished in sixth place again for the second week in a row. Second trip there, another sixth place finish. Um, as you can tell from the footage there, I caught fifth place again um, after we ran in fifth place there for a few laps the cart handled really well it came in pretty decent and then the tires just went away and i missed my mark and then completely messed up my entry into turn one and i uh, ended up washing up the track and then obviously sixth place and seventh place caught me and uh so we had to fight our way back around to get into sixth place and then right at the end i was catching fifth place man i was just just that close, just to get in there. I mean, I was there. If I had maybe one or two laps, I think just one more lap, I probably would have had a decent run at them going into three, but come off of two. But it is what it is, I guess. Uh, we'll just live and learn. Shout out once again to all my sponsors. Thanks for your support. Without you, we could not be competitive. We could not be as consistent as we are. I mean, the second week in a row getting sixth place, driving up to fifth, almost had fifth. Um, a little closer to having fifth this time than last time, so we made some improvements there. Um, we made some uh, adjustments to the court chassis to make it handle better, which it did. Those, those adjustments that we made worked. Um, we're just still trying to get it dialed in, you know. It's just uh, you learn every week, and then with that, the track changes every week. So once you get a general setup down and tire combination figured out, it's still not always going to be the same every week. Every week you go back, you still have to make adjustments. So I feel like this past week we took two, maybe one or two steps forward. Um, the first step was just getting the, the court chassis numbers dialed in, which we did that, I feel like. Um, and then we figured gear out. We, by the feature, we had the gearing figured out. Um, thanks to some help. Thanks uh, to some help from some friends, uh, Arnie and Isaac Coretti. Um, they were there, uh, we raced with them for years, and uh, they came over and gave us some tips and just kind of talked to them a little bit to see uh, what they were running, which Isaac, I think, qualified second or third in the A main for the Clone 350 race. I'm not sure where he finished. Um, they also ran the Clone 375 class as well. So, I mean, I thought I had a hectic night. They ran two classes. I don't know how they got that done, but... They were on point. Um, they had a lot, of, a lot of good speed I saw out of them. Uh, so hats off to those guys for for doing good there. Um, like I said, you know, I feel like the second step that we made was um, gearing, as I mentioned. But then also just getting the line down, you know. Um, that racetrack is kind of tricky. It's not your typical oval. I mean, you can't really... Everyone drives the track differently. But to me, from my perspective... You don't want to run as high as what you think you want to, or you should. Um, three and four being that it's so banked, you don't need to get as big of an arc to get into that corner as it looks like, because it's more banked. When you're sitting on the track, obviously the track's going to be banked, but it looks more flat going into three and four than it really is. Um, so there's a pretty drastic banking change there. Um, so you can use that to get massive runs um i mean i was getting really good runs through three and four one and two is okay if i just need to work on my line a little bit on my entry um sometimes you know if you miss it by a foot if you miss the entry by six to, to six inches to a foot you're going to completely mess up your corner so you know when it comes to entering too early or entering too too late you have to really be careful and pay attention all right so we're going to regroup uh look at our numbers that we had for the last race there and uh just really try to just get better and better each week man that's what it's all about you know um 
We got two sixth place finishes in a row. Um, I feel like we were quicker, a lot quicker this week than we were last week, which is an improvement. Um, I think being that we have our gearing dialed in almost, almost, we're not quite quite there yet. I think, um, you know, going to shoot for top, top five. Um, obviously, that's our goal every week. But I feel like once we get that gearing adjustment in there and get that figured out, um, it's just a matter of getting our tire prep right, you know. Um, some guys prep, some guys don't. That's just another game by itself alone. It's difficult enough to try to keep up the chassis adjustments and gearing. And then you have tires. Tires and stagger and all that other all that other vocabulary to go goes along with it. It's hard to keep up. So, you know, if as all of your racers know, you know, if you the second you fall behind the track, you lost the race. So you need to be able to predict what the track changes are gonna be, what the track's doing, you know, how many classes are running that night, how that's gonna affect the, the track, um, the track condition there. So it's a lot to keep up with, but um, you know, we're doing pretty good, I think. Uh, we're off to a decent start anyway, compared to the very beginning of the season, going to Blairsville and pooping ourselves. But um, we're this close to getting gearing and everything right, we're, we're right on the edge. And um, so I'm excited for that, and uh, hopefully we can get a top top five or top three, even better. All right, thanks for joining in on the show this week. Shout out to the sponsors once again. Check out Tamer Maine for any of your haircut needs, uh, perms, you know, uh, waxings, new your eyebrows wax, give them a call. Check out Tamer Maine in East Freedom slash McKee, Pennsylvania. Julie Potter can get you hooked up. Also, don't forget, um, check out Brent Cogan Electrical Services for any of your electrical needs. You know, with all these thunderstorms and rain showers, trees falling on the lines, any electrical problems you have or you need a new building wired up, give Brent Cogan a shout out, give him a call. I'll list his number in the description as well as Tamer Main's uh, number and contact information. Also, Dustin's Construction. Dustin's Construction has been around for many years. He's a trusted citizen and business owner. Uh, he's one of the best um, construction contractors in the area. Uh, check, uh, check him out. He's uh, busy building sheets as, as usual, but uh, I'll leave a link in this, this, the uh, description for him as well. It's summertime. I know a lot of you people probably have landscaping needs. Also, check out Andrew Weitzel at A2W Services. He can get you hooked up. He can get you your house looking good. Your yard mode uh, cleaned up real nice, so give him a call if you need any landscaping needs. All right, thanks for watching, and have a great week.